Hi everybody, Patrick here from EscapeRoomElectronics.com, EngineeringShock.com, and PaintBallPros.com. This video is the assembly video for my current Kickstarter campaign. It's linked below the Ultrasonic Experimenting Kit. Uh, this video will be broken up into two parts, the assembly of the main board and the assembly of the servo motor board. Um, and we'll be assembling that completely separately from the main board. So, let me introduce you to the components. One 602A LCD with 16-pin header, custom printed circuit board, a 5mm power jack, 7805 5-volt regulator, a 2.7K ohm resistor, a 100 ohm resistor, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, two 10K ohm resistors, a, an active piezo buzzer, a 10K ohm resistor, a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, two 18 picofarad capacitors, 16 megahertz crystal oscillator, a single uh, female 4-pin header, two female 6-pin headers, a 28-pin socket, dip socket, uh, at mega 328 PU programmed microcontroller, same used as in Arduino. Three three pin headers, a, mo a momentary push button, eight M3 screws, four M3 standoffs, two 2N2222 transistors, and an HCSR04 ultrasonic module. Plus, I forgot to add these, three jumpers. So first things first, we're going to populate all of the resistors on the main board. Resistors don't have a polarity, you just have to make sure that they're in the right spots. So let's do that right now. If you don't know how to read a resistor color code, use your multimeter to determine which resistors are what. Now all of the resistor slots on here are labeled. So right here, R1 is labeled 4K7. Now this resistor controls the contrast of your LCD. And I'm actually going to be including a 2.7K ohm resistor as opposed to a 4.7K resistor. So your 2.7K ohm resistor goes in the R1 slot labeled 4K7R1. Your two 1K ohm resistors go in the R3 and R4 slots, right here and right here. They're both labeled 1K. Your single 10K ohm resistor goes into R5 labeled 10KR5. And your single 100 ohm resistor goes into R2 labeled R2 100 ohm, 100R. So make sure they are flat. Um, and that there are no shorts to nearby uh, leads. You're not going to have any trouble with this. Again, there's no polarity. It's a very simple, uh, very simple step. Next, we will solder in our four capacitors. Now, for this step, wait until you see how I've populated these components in the next step before you start soldering. So the three ceramic capacitors, they have no polarity. Both leads are the same size. They can be populated in the right spots in any orientation. The two 18 picofarad ceramic capacitors are physically smaller than the 100 microfarad. And they go in the C4 and C5 slots. They're both labeled 18P. Now make sure that they, uh, they do not short each other when you're soldering. Just place them in from the top, make them flush down to the board. Uh, same thing with the 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. That goes in the C1 slot labeled C1 0.1U. Solder those into place. They won't go, this one won't go completely flush to the board. Just make it go down as far as you can. Uh, you don't have to push too hard. Now the uh, 100 microfarad cylinder electrolytic capacitor has a long lead and a short lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. And that goes in the C6 slot, labeled C6100U. Now there's a little plus sign above the left hole. But you can't see it in the video, I don't imagine. But look uh, with your eyes when you receive your, your kit, and you'll see a little plus sign above the left hole. Long lead goes in the left, short lead goes in the right. If you reverse that, you power it up, you're going to pop it. But as well, what we want to do is we actually want to bend it down because the LCD is going to fit over top of this and it's too tall. So what we want to do is we want to solder it in, but before we solder it, we want to bend the component down a little bit so it's facing the bottom of the board. Now this is why I say wait until the next step in the video so you see exactly what I've done. So solder those all in place after the next step and next we will solder in our two transistors. For this step, we're actually going to include our buzzer uh, in, as well as the transistors, but before we go ahead with that, as you can see, I've soldered in the 100 microfarad ceramic capacitor or electrolytic capacitor facing down. So now it won't interfere with the LCD when we place it on. The buzzer has two leads. One is very short, one is a little bit longer, and the longer pin goes in B plus, shorter pin goes in B minus. Much like the electrolytic capacitor, long lead is positive, short lead is negative. Now for the two transistors, uh, this is very, it's very simple. There's a flat side and a curved side. This one is lying on its curved side, so it's toddling back and forth. This transistor is facing down, and so the flat side is facing the surface of this white piece of paper. 
they go in the T1 and T2 slots. For T1, you want to make sure that the transistor's face, the, the flat side of the transistor is facing the back of the board. And for T2, you want to make sure that the flat side of the resistor, resistor is, transistor is facing the front of the board. And if you actually look closely at the footprints, oops, sorry about that. There we go. You just want to make sure that you follow the footprint. Flat side facing the top, flat side facing the bottom. If you turn those around, your board will not work correctly. So solder those into place. Next, we will solder uh, our crystal oscillator and our socket. Another easy step. The crystal oscillator goes in this slot right here. Polarity doesn't matter. Uh, just place it in there. Make sure that you have nice solder joints on both of the oscillator needs, the crystal oscillator leads, sorry. And the socket has a little notch on the left hand side. And what you'll notice from a bird's eye view is that there's a little notch on the footprint here. So you want to make sure that the notch is facing left on the socket from this perspective and your socket should drop nope, nicely into the holes. There we go. And what I like to do is I like to hold the socket down with one hand, dab a little bit of solder on the tip of my soldering iron and, uh, and just dab it on one of the outside leads and that will hold it into place. You can double check it afterwards. Then I lay it down and solder the rest of the leads and then once I'm done that I retouch up the solder on the first initial lead. So solder those into place and next we will solder in our headers. Before I move on with this step I want to mention that the C2 capacitor right here on the left is not used. So don't worry about that footprint right there. So as you can see we've got three three pin male headers, one four pin female header and two six pin uh, female headers. Your female, your four pin female header goes right here in this slot. Your three three pin headers go in these three slots right here. And these two six pin headers go in the far left of the LCD connector slot and the far right. There's four pins in the middle that are not used. So solder those all into place. If you want to wait until the next step before doing so, so you can see how I've soldered everything in, uh, please feel free. Make sure that once you're done soldering each of these headers, that there are no shorts between them, because you want to make absolutely positively certain that there are no shorts. Take your time. There's no rush. Uh, and at that point, once we're done that, we're going to uh, solder in our 7805 5-volt regulator and our... Uh, power jack, our 5 millimeter power jack. And from there we're almost done. The button completely slipped my mind. The button is probably one of the easiest components here. Easiest to populate anyway. Uh, it only fits in one way. Line the button up with all the holes. Check and, sh and make sure that all the holes are lined up and it should just pop into place. Now when you solder it, make sure that it still stays flush to the board. There are four leads of course, so solder them all in. Easy component. The power jack is also a relatively easy component. It only fits in one way as well. You want to make sure that you don't apply too much heat to each of the four leads, but you want to make sure that all three leads have enough solder on them. Uh, just take your time with it because it is a plastic component and you don't want to melt the inside, otherwise it won't receive power from, uh, from a, uh, an AC to DC power adapter. So just take your time and I apply solder here, then here, then here, then here, then here, here, and here. Re reapply heat, give it some time. It's not a difficult component to solder into place, but uh, you just want to take your time with it. This is just an extra component I'm using to hold, to keep the board uh, aimed up at an angle so there's not so much of a glare. Now the 7805 5 volt regulator, you'll notice it has a black side and a whitish grayish side. You want to make sure that it fits in like this with the black side facing left, the white side facing right and what we're going to do is we're going to do the same with the 7805 that we did with the electrolytic capacitor. We're going to bend it down. You want to make sure it's bent down, hold it with one finger and then what you want to do is just dab some solder here, let go and then reheat that one once you've soldered in the other two pins. Make sure there are no shorts. That's a very very important component. That takes your 9 volts uh, and regulates it down to a 5 volts, which is safe for your Atmel chip. So solder those components into place, and next we'll be worrying about getting our LCD ready for mounting. Readying the LCD is very simple. You just have to make, take your time and make sure that you don't shorten any of these pins together. From the bottom, make sure the long pins are facing the bottom. Hold it with your, th with your nail to make sure that it's sitting at 90 degrees. And what I like to do again is to dab a little bit of solder there or there. 
making sure that it's steady on its own. Then what you can do is you can lay it on the table at an angle and solder the rest of them in. But what I like to do is after I solder in one pin, I like to have something underneath it, like a pair of pliers or something, and then I solder the rest of the pins so that there's no pressure on the pins themselves because if, if uh, you're not careful, you don't want it for, it for the for there to be an angle on this header. You want to make sure it's perfectly 90 degrees. So solder all 16 pins, and again, it's also very helpful to take uh, a magnifying glass and check to make sure that there are no shorts. Uh, if there is a short and you plug it in, you likely won't do damage unless certain pins are shorted. So just make absolutely sure that none of the pads are shorted. If you do short something, uh, fix it obviously before before plugging it into the main board, which will be our next step. With the LCD ready, we're just about ready to mount the LCD, but we want to make sure we place our, our program chip in here first. Now, there's a notch on the top left of the chip. Remember there was a notch on the uh, left hand side from this perspective of the dip socket. You want to make sure that the notches are both facing left from this perspective. Now, what I like to do, typically, I'm going to have to reach around the uh, camera here. Hopefully, I don't mess anything up. I like to take the bottom pins, line them up with all 14 holes in the bottom. And once I'm, I'm confident they're all lined up, I, I apply a little bit of pressure with all my fingers on the top pins. And you'll feel it. You'll feel it kind of sink in. And just if, if you're not confident that all, all of the pins are in the holes, don't push. But once you are confident, take both your thumbs and just push down. Then inspect to make sure all the pins are in properly. Looks good. And uh, now we're ready to mount our LCD. There are two mounting holes on each side for the LCD. What we want to do is for all four of those holes is take an M3 screw from the bottom and screw on a standoff. It doesn't have to be overly tight. You can keep it tight, you don't have to. Do that with all four uh, holes. With the LCD ready to mount, uh, there's the end goal is to take the six rightmost six pins and leftmost six pins and place them face down carefully, lining up with the uh, two six pin headers and fitting it in. Now, but what you'll notice is that there's a little bit of an obstruction here. Now you don't have to do this next step, it's up to you. If you want to skip it, you can just gently place your other the three or four M3 screws in and just don't tighten too tight. But if you want to carefully remove the LCD and cut this tab, there's a little tab here, and it's not an important tab. You can take some wire cutters and you can simply cut that tab off, obviously being very careful not to scuffle the PCB or these uh, resistors and capacitors right here. So if you are going to do that, you want to take your wire cutters and just very gently remove it. Once you've done that, if you're going to do that, I should say, place the, uh, the, the LCD on, check to make sure everything's flush, and then add your other four M3 screws. And if you find that you're having trouble lining things up, you can loosen the screws on the bottom so that you have some, you have some, um, so that the the uh, the standoffs are a little bit looser and that makes them a little bit easier to line up. So now, once we do that, I'm going to power it up, just going to make sure the LCD is functioning, and then we're going to move on to the servo PCB. The jumpers, we're not using in this video, but they are included with the kit. They, just, they uh, choose what mode you're in. So I'm going to plug it in, it should say ultrasonic test unit, ultrasonic test unit. Hopefully you can see that, and it will um, it's entered into servo sentry mode. That's because the inputs that select what mode we're in is, are uh, they're floating right now, so it'll cho choose a random mode. We need to select which modes using these two headers right here. We're not going to do that in this video, but it does work. Everything's hunky dory. I'm going to remove power, and now we're going to solder together our servo motor uh, printed circuit board set. So as you can see, we have three male headers. We've got two three pin male headers, a single four pin male header, a single 4-pin female header, custom printed circuit board, um, a single 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, and a single 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So, first things first, we're going to do the headers first, and then we're going to do the capacitors last. Now, um, what we're going to, we want our, th our four, or our three male headers here, and our single female header here. So we want the long, the long pins facing up obviously, the short pins facing the bottom of the board, and the single four pin header obviously we want to have the pins facing the bottom of the board and the female head side up. So I'm going to solder those into place. Again what I like to do is I like to place 
the uh, headers in, hold down, hold it down uh, at 90 degrees with my with my fingernail, dab a little bit of solder on one on one pin, then make sure it's not moving, then solder the rest of the rest of the pins. Now you might want to start with the outer the four pin uh, female header or male header first, sorry, and then work your way in. And with the female header, obviously it's very simple. Other side, hold it down with one with one finger, make sure it's at 90 degrees, dab, solder on one pin, and then make sure it's still sitting at 90 degrees, and then solder the rest. So now, once we do that, uh, I'm going to solder in the capacitors. So from this perspective, uh, it can be very hard to see but the electrolytic capacitor is the circular footprint on the uh, left and the electrolytic capacitor uh, C1 is on the right. Now the ceramic capacitor that goes in the C1 slot no uh, polarity just like the other board just make sure that you don't have any shorts when you're placing it in there and your electrolytic capacitor obviously long lead short lead your long lead goes in the rightmost pin facing the male headers and your short lead goes through the left hole facing the female header. Solder those into place and we'll look at the final product. Huzzah! Uh, in the next video we'll talk about how all of this works. That will be the video manual. This is the extra board in the Kickstarter campaign that only comes with some reward tiers and the uh, ultrasonic module fits on there and this fits on the servo motor. Obviously we use these for the connections and uh, the Sentry will turn the servo motor back and forth like this. In any case, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Sorry if I stuttered a little bit. I'm uh, running on a little bit of uh, on less sleep than I would like. But in any case, I, I do appreciate your time. Thank you for watching and have a great weekend.